Welcome to Kino Society. With Owen Shapiro. Today on Kino Society, we have Jameson Newlander, who is best known for playing Alan Frog, one of the two vampire hunting brothers in The Lost Boys from 1987, alongside Corey Feldman. After this, a couple of years later, he went to get a BFA in acting at NYU and acted on stages in New York, Vermont, Kentucky, and California throughout his 20s. While doing theater, Newlander began writing and became an award-winning playwright with his 1996 play Remember This at Actors Theater of Louisville. We are talking with a true legend right here. Hi, Jameson. So, Jameson, I'm curious, as a kid, did you ever dream about becoming an actor at such a young age, or did this opportunity come up unexpectedly? So it's, you know, it's complicated. I mean, I, I think that... Um... I think definitely I was a performer uh, since I was a little kid. Um, and I think that that's really what propelled me in that direction because my mom noticed it and we were in LA. And so, um, so she just thought, Hey, I mean, I don't know what exactly she thought, but she thought, Hey, here's an opportunity. Here's a kid who uh, I was a bit awkward for a little while, but then I, you know, coming into teenage years kind of began to look like this all American kid. And so, those two things combined. So there was both opportunity and also drive. So can you tell us a little bit about your past before embodying the character of Alan Frog? Yeah. So, you know, um, I, I hadn't been acting for too long. I, I started out, I wasn't a kid actor like uh, I, I, you know, the Corey Feldman or the a bunch of the kids that I ended up working with. Um, I didn't start then. I was just kind of a regular kid at that point. I went to school. I was it wasn't until, I mean, you know, in, in seventh and eighth grade, I, I performed, um, you know, I was like the star, the spring sing, you know, at middle school and that sort of thing. Um, but for the most part, I was, I was a student and, and just had interests like that. And, you know, I, I think I had a happy childhood. I, you know, revisit that constantly because I also, it was also a lot of strife. I had, my, my parents were divorced when I was three and I, um, we had a really rough kind of custody battle uh, for a while when I was a kid. And then I also, I wore leg braces for two and a half years when I was a kid. I had a a little bone disease that, you know, wasn't like a, you know, you can correct it with wearing a brace. So I, so I did. And so, you know, it was like a bit tumultuous. It was a good childhood, I think. Um, and then started acting about age 14. So, and then I got Lost Boys when I was 16. So obviously you started out in the film industry at a very young age. How was that experience for you? And did you find it weird or did you absolutely love it? So, the, you know, it's a complex um, answer, especially since, I mean, you know, maybe if I, if you would have asked me 10 years ago or 20 years ago or, or whatever, um, I might have said, hey, it was just amazing. And it, it, because it was in a lot of ways, it was amazing. Um, there was a lot of worry and stress on my part as I, you know, as I've sort of unraveled it in my adult life, um, because, um, you know, wanting to get that next job and all of a sudden at a, as a teenager, thinking of these things, thinking of being out of work or, you know, um, rather than just being a regular kid. So th there were some disadvantages to that and, um, other kinds of disadvantages throughout, uh, throughout my adult life, um, not disadvantages, but there were uh, trying to be trying to m make it as an actor, as an adult, there were some challenges. Like I, I was operating as a child. I was still, you know, when I would audition and things like that, I thought of myself as a teenager for many years, you know what I mean? So it's complex and it was really amazing in a lot of ways and had its challenges too. So as your typical routine, what was your typical routine as a young actor when entering the Lost Boys film set? So, um, you know, because I was young and I was trying to figure out who I was and what kind of actor I was and things like that, I, I, um, it's not like I had a technique down, like, okay, I'm going to do this and then I'll do voice exercises. I didn't know anything about voice exercises. And, you know, I just, my routine really was... Um, it, it's important, uh, you know, as a teenager, um, it's important to be able to come on set and really be a pro and at the same time, not lose your uh, teenagerness, you know. So I think that there's a bit of that trying to get that balance, trying to be come to the set, you know, fully rested, fully prepared, um, you know, lowering your lines down well is important 
an important part of um, acting on film because you get a curveball in the middle of a scene, and if you don't know your lines that well, then you, you're going to go up on your lines, and then everybody's, you know, like, oh, we got to go back to the beginning. I mean, not always, but you know, that happens a lot that people forget their lines. But um, that's a big part of it, just being prepared knowing my character, um, thinking about it, remembering to have fun. That was, that's a big part of uh, the beginning. It's like that being a pro and also being a teenager, um, you know, it's like you got to remember to have fun. And that's kind of, that's what people want to see on screen, you know. What were some more of the challenges that you encountered when acting at such a young age? So let's see. Um, there, there are a few things. Like, uh, number one, that um, I... I didn't, I wasn't on the football team, you know, I wasn't, uh, I didn't, um, you know, I, I liked water polo a lot and I would have loved to have done that, but I, I didn't, my after schools were going on auditions, which was, you know, incredible. I was grateful to be able to do that, but I missed out on some of the, some of the things you get to do as a kid. And so, so there's that. And then there's also the factor that people, you know, with me and, you know, again, these are ongoing, like, things that I'm unraveling as I'm looking at, at, you know, looking at different things and uh, about my, my early career was like, people tended to look at me like I knew what I was doing. And I really did. <laughs> I really didn't know what I was doing. I was a teenager, you know, and I, um, Corey Feldman may know what he was doing because he was, he had a, a, a whole team around him who, who was making money off of him since they were three and Corey Haim, same kind of thing. They were making big money off of him. He had a team around him. I didn't really know what I was doing and I had to figure it out while people seem to think that I did know what I was doing. So that kind of thing can be a challenge. So how do you feel when you're called back to do the second and then the third of the movie of the Lost Boys? From the beginning, they were talking about doing a, a sequel. Uh, I remember meeting with Joel Schumacher, the director, um, and he, um, he, this was in like 1988 or something. And he was like, Oh, we got it. I just had a meeting. It was great. You know, we're going to bring back the frog brothers and stuff. So I was really excited to do that. Then, you know, there was a lot of, there's a lot of time that passed, you know, then uh, between the time when it might've been a great idea to do a sequel until they eventually did do a sequel, which was what? Uh, 2007, I think maybe was the lost boys to the tribe. And, and then I think in the Lost Boys 3 was 2009 or 2010, something like that. Um, so, you know, a full, what is that, 20 years later. I think that I was thrilled to do it. I, I wish that they had made it a big movie. Um, they made it, they kind of backed into it in certain ways. Certainly the, the second one, uh, you know, the first sequel, they, they backed into it. And I mean, that's my term, backed into it. I mean, they, they didn't build what I think, you know, building on the, the assets of the original, which was, you know, the original cast and, and they kind of missed that opportunity. I like what they did with the second movie. I like how they added a new group of vampires. I just think that they, anyway, it was, it was a second movie was a little bit, I think, unfocused from the point of view of the franchise. And that was a bit frustrating because here we had all this momentum and then we kind of lost it. And then by the time we got to Lost Boys 3, the fans had said, I mean, had said, you know, they had done their research, the Warner Brothers had done the research to find that the fans really do want the original characters back. And they were, they loved Feldman in the second one, or the diehard fans really loved Feldman in the second one. And so it made sense for the Frog Brothers to come back. And it was great to come back. And it was awesome to come back to work with Feldman and be the Frog Brothers again, because we have a certain kind of chemistry. We, whenever we get together, we have this, this kind of chemistry, this sort of brotherly chemistry. And that was really great. And it was great to advance the Frog Brothers, you know, in the franchise and all that. Um, so it was really great in those ways. And it was also, I went to South Africa. We shot the whole thing in South Africa, which was really cool. I had a one-year-old kid. My, my, my son, who's 12 now, is, was one. And it was just, you know, really cool to do that. Six weeks, we went over there, the whole family, me and, and my wife and, and Nathan. And, um, and we, uh, so it was, it was really great to do it. I, I, Again, I wish it kind of came sooner and it was bigger. We're still trying to do something with Frog Brothers, so um, so we'll see. But it was great to do it. I was thrilled to do it. Was the third one uh, Schumacher as well? It wasn't actually second and third one were not Schumacher. Um, he was, you know, he had to sign off. I'm pretty sure because I'm pretty sure he he owns the part of the franchise. But 
Yeah, he didn't do the second or third one. Yeah, because if he did, that would be a bit tricky now. Since I, I think he might have died recently. Yeah, he just died um, last month, I think it was. It could be longer ago than that because time is going in this bizarre way during uh, with all of us being at home, you know. <laughs> Um, what were the differences you encountered when working as an actor for these three movies? Cool. Okay. So there, there were, there were a bunch of differences. Um, the first movie, I mean, you know, doing the first movie, it was a big movie. It was, you know, it wasn't like a a huge thing where they were spending. It wasn't like they broke any records on what they spent on it. They, they did it, I think, um, fairly inexpensively for a movie at the time. But it was a big movie in the sense that really everybody in town knew about it, knew what was going on. You know, they got the top, like, you know, Jason Patrick and Kiefer and Jamie Gertz, you know, they had their pick of, um, uh, of the top people. And, and so it was, it was a pretty big deal. And I was kind of one piece of a bigger picture and I was pretty young. And so it was, it was like true. I guess that first movie was kind of like true Hollywood. You know, it was the eighties. It was like, a very Hollywood popcorn movie. And, uh, and it was exciting, but I was also new. I was 16 and um, I had been, you know, doing parts here and there. So it was like a, uh, it was a new experience for me to be a, a, a lead on, on a big, big movie like that. Um, so that was, that was, you know, its own thing. And then the second movie, um, because I was, uh, I really only had a very small part in the second movie. The second movie was like this. They were, they said, we're going to do this. They started to shoot and they're like, there's going to be a role for you. We're trying to work it out. And so little by little, they had expanded Corey's role, Corey Feldman's role in the second one. And they were ready to, you know, and they were like, okay, let's get some, let's get James in here. Let's try and get the Frog Brothers together. Um, And it ended up in the special features. So it it wasn't um, successful. It was just one day I did on that, on the second movie. And, um, it was exciting to be back. It was exciting to like look at a call sheet and see Lost Boys on it, and um, especially after all this anticipation of being like you know, every year <laughs> and being like we're gonna we're gonna do a sequel, you know, <laughs> you know that was one thing. And then by the time the third movie came out, the second movie did really well. It did really well on uh, it was just direct to DVD, but it did did really well on DVD. And so they were excited. People were excited again about the third movie and about getting the Frog Brothers together and getting going to South Africa. We would, Cape Town for six months. I don't know if you've ever been to Cape Town, but it's a beautiful city. And I was there with, you know, Feldman and, um, you know, with uh, Hani, my wife, and my my uh, one year old son. And it was like just really wild being all of a sudden, you know, in, involved in Lost Boys again on this shoot. You know, a working actor basically. I, you know, I worked here and there, but I wasn't really a working actor. You know, uh, that whole time. So, um. You know, all very different things. I was in very different places in my life, very different types of productions. And I mean, in terms, you know, in terms of the, I don't want to go too off on the, the terms of the quality of the pieces. I just feel like, you know, a movie like Lost Boys, you're not going to get that first. You're not going to get that lightning in a bottle they had, you know, with Lost Boys. I should say that we had with Lost, Lost Boys 1. Schumacher had this vision for it, you know. Um, two and three, I think, are nice movies, nice little movies. Um, it, it, you can't really, I think, compare it to the original. I don't know if you feel that way or, you know. No, it's not very understandable. Yeah. Right. It's, they're, they're direct to DVD sequels. What do you expect of that? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So after The Lost Boys, your career clearly launched, but it's, tell us how you switch to theater and directing. Where did that come from? So, you know, um, uh, again, it's one of those things I'm still sort of unraveling exactly how it happened. I, I was, I had a lot of th- different things I could do as a kid. I was an honor student uh, and then I became an actor and then I was, you know, acting is a, a really intense profession. Um, and it was a little much for me, the thing, you know, that you got to go in all the time and basically beg for a role. <laughs> you know, just be like, I'll do anything. I'll dance. You know, what do you want me to do? Um, and so I wasn't, as much as I loved acting and I, I, I loved the, uh, I loved the art of acting, the, you know, the craft of acting, the pursuing it was, was, was really tough. And um, I thought I would go to New York and maybe get a theater base in it. So I went, I, I studied uh, theater at NYU and, and I did theater in New York and, you know, regionally, um, you know, different theaters around the country. Um, and it was great, but it doesn't have the same kind of career 
longevity. You know, you do it and there are people who, you know, who build a great stage career. I wasn't, I didn't build a stage career. I, I did some stuff. I was also had a foot in film. And then I, and I thought, okay, let me try starting. Let me try directing um, because I was writing and I was acting and I'd even produced a little bit. I produced a, a short film. Um, and I was like, you know what, let me just try directing. Um, and so I thought, so, so I did, I tried directing. I don't like directing. I don't really these days consider myself a, to be a director. Um, I can, but mostly it's acting and writing. Uh, and so theater became this other thing where I, you know, theater acting is incredible. Uh, I, if, you know, anybody who's listening who's an actor can probably understand. I mean, the, the idea that, you know, the audience is right there and they're reacting to you and you tell a joke and the audience could go crazy. I mean, that, that joy is, that's something that you can't, um, you don't get the same kind of feedback on film, you know, as you do from an audience, a live audience in, in theater. So, you know, that's kind of the long and the short of, of, you know, why it is artistically why I went in that direction. Um, part of it also goes back to the other side of um, where, you know, people might have thought I knew what I was doing because I was getting these roles, but I didn't really know what I was doing. And I was, I didn't know how to build a career in that way. And so I, my film career kind of stumbled. Um, so all those things were going on at once. But so tell us a bit of the differences between the film and theater industry. I think that, you know, when you get into the big time, it's all very similar. Um, you've got people who are who are putting a lot of money up, um, you know, in the case of a Broadway show or even an off-Broadway show um, or a big movie or something. Um, you have people who put up a lot of money. They want they want to, they want their success and they're willing, you know, they they expect top work. They expect, um, you know, they expect, you know, you to really bring it, everybody to really bring it. Um, and so, so there's a lot of similarity at the top. When you start getting down into m more of the, um, you know, when you're not at the big time, you're at, you know, you're doing shows, you might be doing shows, you might be doing independent movies, you know, you might land a commercial here or there. Um, it's all very different. Theater, there's just a lot less riding on theater. I mean, there's, um, I mean, you know, at the same time, as I think about it, though, I've been involved in, you know, what I call like garage productions. Uh, independent very independent productions and very in, independent productions of, of film are very similar to very independent productions on, on on stage because everybody's scrambling and everybody's creative trying to come up with solutions and stuff so it's hard to say it's a complex question i don't think i have a good answer to it but um a lot of similarities a lot of differences do you have any advice for people who want to make it big in the film industry so i do have advice which i think people should take or leave because i may feel differently in a year <laughs> you know it's like advice that changes constantly but what i would say is this this is a, this is an industry about people i mean it's about your talents about your craft absolutely you got to be tip top on that you got to like really push yourself constantly artistically um but it's a people business the people who i know who are um successful very successful they're they're people who are not just good at networking but they're They're people who you want to be around. They're people who you want to go out and, and you know, have a, a meal with. You know, you're, they're people who you want to talk to. And, and that's how, kind of how a lot of product, uh, projects happen is that there's the business side of it where you go in and you go on auditions and you go, um, you know, and you, 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 know, you, gotta, you show up and you got to bring your A game and everything. And then there's the kind of soft skills, which is that, You want to go out after the shows. You want to go. You want to go out. You want to go to the rap parties. You want to go. You want to keep in touch with people, because those are the people that are going to be your colleagues and support people. You know, uh, being competitive is is fantastic in terms of challenging yourself, but um, don't be overly competitive with your peers. These people are your your network. These people are your support system, and be the support system for them. Go see your friends' plays. Go watch your friends' movies. If your friends are in a film festival, try and get there if you can. You know, that's what I think. Supporting each other, um, building a community. That's the advice that I think that I feel most strongly about. And finally, which were some of the movies that currently inspire your work or that you've watched as a kid and you've always truly really loved? Cool, cool. I love talking about my, my favorite movies. Um, there are some movies like, um, first of all, Jaws uh is one of my favorite movies um and, and i mean 
I'm not a huge, uh, even though I'm in the horror genre, I'm not a huge horror movie. And I don't necessarily consider Jaws, you know, to only be a horror movie. But um, I think that's a great movie. Um, uh, and those performances, every one of those performances, very, um, Richard Dreyfus especially was a big influence for me early on. Also, I, um, I love the movie um, Casablanca which may sound like too like film, you know, like film theory class or whatever. No, no, I love that movie. Do you really? Yeah, see, I, I'm, yeah. I've met some people recently who didn't like it, and I was like, I, I don't understand <laughs> I don't understand how you don't like Casablanca. But of course, everybody has their opinions. But I mean, it's different than Citizen Kane, which of course is also a great movie, and they invented so many things, and most of the stuff we do now is based in some way on the inventions they made, you know, during Citizen Kane. But it's not the same kind of movie that I like. I like, you know, Casablanca is a popcorn movie. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's this great movie with this hero and this reluctant hero, you know, who's eventually realizes that he has to step in. And, you know, this is just classic movie making. So I love Casablanca. Very, very influenced by Casablanca. Um, there's a movie called Broadcast News in the 80s. Uh, I don't know if you know that movie, uh, William Hurt and Holly Hunter. Uh, Albert Brooks were the three stars. And it. I watched that movie. There was a time I would watch it weekly. I would watch it, you know, at least once a week. Part of it is that I, I had a little crush on Holly Hunter as a kid. I mean, as a teenager. But it's also that um, the, the film is, I recommend watching it. it it's, a, it's a beautiful movie about the news industry and how it was changing toward, you know, these stars, these anchor anchors who were stars and how it, it moved from, you know, at least this filmmaker believed that it was moving from journalism to stars, to the star system. And um, I think it was definitely um, ahead of its time in that way. Uh, the Big Chill is a great movie, too. I don't know if you know that one. Uh, I guess these are all somewhat at the same time. Um, Pulp Fiction is a big influence for me. I don't know if you're a Tarantino fan. I've um, seen um, his film, entire filmography, actually. Yeah, it's understandable as a film buff. Um, that you would it's um pulp fiction i find to be just incredible and i still can't quite figure out like it it, it successfully threw me that the, the changing of the timeline and all that if i guess if people don't know the movie then they won't know but i just thought it's just a beautiful movie and i thought i think tarantino is really a special director it doesn't always hit it you know we can't always be uh successful um every single movie but you know yeah, i thought that um, most of his movies were the only one I didn't, I downright think that I thought was eh, was Death Proof. I didn't even see that one. I don't know, is it? Oh. Did, did he miss it completely in that? Um, he didn't miss it completely. It, it's campy. It's purposefully campy, but I mean, it's just, it's not great. Yeah, that's the thing is, you know, you get, didn't he, did I just heard Tarantino said he's like, are you only going to make eight movies or something like that? And, and now he's done or, or about to be done. Did you hear this? I heard he was gonna. He was supposed to only make ten movies and then retire. Oh, ten. I hope that's not the case because he is a very good filmmaker. Yeah, yeah. Um, Reservoir Dogs too, of course. I love that movie. I mean, not of course, but dark, dark movie. But also, I mean, there's a there's a combination of theater and film together. It's a, a film that easily could have been a play. I even saw it as a play, actually. Reservoir Dames. <laughs> friend of mine did it in. Uh, in Hollywood. I'm sure there's a bunch of other movies that are influential. I mean, Robert De Niro uh, was incredibly influential. Um, Dustin Hoffman was, I mean, uh, these were the Pacino. I mean, partly, you know, those guys are kind of on the short side like me, so maybe that's why I like them. But, um, you know, great actors from when I was a kid, you know, people that I looked up to. Yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of influences, definitely. Yeah. So now that we've gotten over your career as an actor, writer, and director, what's next for you? Any upcoming projects? Yeah, you know, there's this, so uh, there's a little bit of a bump going on right now where, um, you know, the 80s have been big. They, they, they were big. They've been big for a number of years. And um, eventually that's going to fade. But right now it's still pretty strong. And so there's a big community of 80s actors um, with Cobra Kai on. Um, the you know the uh, karate kid thing um and with this kind of um you know the feeling that the frog brothers could be could kind of have their own piece of the franchise that's 
that's not quite as grand. It's not quite as, uh, you know, it's not Lost Boys. It's, it's not, you know, it's a, it's a, a smaller, darker show. Um, that's where, that's where we're pitching right now. I, I have a meeting next week that, um, I have a meeting next week to kind of, you know, begin to, to see if it's possible. I wrote a, a pilot script for it. So we'll see if we can get something like that on the air. Um, there's also a, a project that I've been working on for a long time. I, uh, one of my big early writing projects when I was in New York, but really when, one of the first things I dug into when I was like, okay, you know what? I'm a writer is a project called the virtual adventures of riff cat Polito. Um, it was a play originally I did in New York and um, I wrote it then as a screenplay. It got a little bit of a buzz when I was out here in the early 2000s. It, it's a virtual adventure, you know, a virtual reality story of a detective, in, uh, a noir detective in VR. And um, I'm, we're, I'm trying to, we're going to be doing a, an audio version of it. I have a podcast myself. Um, I have a podcast that we, we did a first season of a couple of years ago called the Jameson Newlander and some other guy show. <laughs> it was uh, my friend of mine was like, we, we don't need to know who I am. I'm just some other guy. So, uh, and so we're going to do a version of the Riff Cat Polito story on there in audio. Um, and then try to build that into something else, a really cool story, something I've been, it's been a kind of a pet project for a long time. Um, and there's a bunch of other different things that now that these things are building a little momentum, I'm hoping to bring along some of these other things. I, I'm acting a bit more now. A, a few years ago, I booked a few roles. I, I did a movie called Bone Tomahawk, um, which was a, a new writer director. You know that I've, one? I've actually heard of it. I have not seen it. I recommend it if you can deal with very gory things. Um, yeah, it's fine. a. I think it's, <laughs> is that right it's a great movie there's a there's a there's some serious gore at, at a couple points in it um but uh, so that um and i did a few other roles so acting's beginning to pick up a little bit more and we'll see i kind of feel like there's a bit of a renaissance what i've been calling it jameson uh coming up here <laughs> uh where um you know there might be a, a good opportunity for some more artistic expression out there in the in the uh, film and theater and TV world for me. It would be great. Finally, where can my listeners find you and connect with you? So um, right now I'm on Twitter. Uh, my handle is uh, at Jameson Newland. I couldn't fit the ER when, the, when I started the account. Now I probably could, but it was at Jameson Newland. Um, that's the main place I interact with fans. Um, there's a bunch of stuff going on on Twitter right now with me and Feldman. There's a, we did a kind of a ghost hunting um, thing, so there, that's going on. If you, if you if you come on Twitter and go on the Twitter feed, it's a uh, there's a lot of fun to be had. Um, I'm not yet on Instagram. I've been kind of waiting for my moment to launch onto Instagram, so that'll happen soon. Um, I think I think Twitter is really the spot. I'm also gonna I'm in the middle of building my website, jamesonnewlander.com. There's going to be some good content on that, and also links to wherever you can find me um, in different ways. Uh, on there i'm also doing cameos uh, i don't know if you guys are familiar with what cameos are it's an app where you can do you can get a video message from your uh your favorite uh star or even somewhat favorite star uh so that's i think that's right now the only places to find me but i don't mean the only that's a lot here all right. Thank you so much for your time, Jameson. That's all for today. Don't forget that you can subscribe to Kino Society on iTunes and Spotify.